joined now by the head coach and president of, of the Chesapeake Bayhawks, Dave Cottle. And, and coach, thanks for taking a couple minutes out of your day to join us here. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity. So, Coach, you said in an interview with, with Evan Washburn for Inside the MLL on the field in Philadelphia that you were going to get right back to work at 8.30 on Monday morning after you won the championship. And uh, I would never call you a liar, but I guess you were definitely speaking the truth, and, and, and the proof is in the pudding here. You, you big trade on, on Friday, uh, which I'm sure you started on not too long after, after that, and uh, you acquire Brendan Mundorf from, from the Denver Outlaws. So we'll start with, with Brendan in particular, and talk about acquiring him and what he brings to the Bayhawks as you continue, as you said, to try and rebuild this thing and make another run at a title. Well, you know, Brennan's a guy who played with Drew Westfeld in college. They were teammates at the Denver Outlaws. He lives in Baltimore. Uh, you know, he's a uh, great go-to-the-goal type attackman, but he's also an outstanding feeder. And two years ago, he was the offensive MVP in the league. So uh, we went after Brennan. But more importantly for us, most of all the trades I made, the one that's probably hurt me the most uh, emotionally is trading John Grant. Uh, you know, the book on John was that he was a hired gun. He'd just come in and play, and and he got in right into the fabric of our team. He became a leader, and and you know, him along with Mike Simon were are two very difficult guys to say goodbye to. But in the long term growth of the BayHawks. We need to probably get a little bit younger in that position, and uh, and that's why we traded for Brandon. Well, and we'll get to, to Junior in a second. But Tyler, you mentioned Brendan and Drew having played together, which everybody knows. So, but it gives you, I guess, an attack that's comprised of at least in some portion of, of Brendan, Drew Westervelt, and Ben Rubior, uh, who's been great for you for a number of years now. Talk about how those three guys, uh, chemistry-wise, you think. Well, obviously, no Brendan and Drew will fit together fine, but throw Ben into the mix. How that group will work as a as an attack for the BayHawks moving forward. Well, I think Ben has been smart enough as a high school coach that he's found a way to work with everybody. And Brennan's not that hard to work with anyway. You know, we just got to know when to give him some space so when he can be creative. But at the same time, if you move and get open, Brennan's going to throw the ball. So, you know, we're excited about that opportunity. And like you say, Ben Rubier's had a 30-goal season for us this year. Uh, you know, Drew Westerveld had a 40-goal season, and Brennan Mundorf had a 20-goal season. If those numbers stay the same again, that would probably be good for us in the future. And you talked about parting ways with John Grant, and it's, it's got to be tough, as you mentioned, but he is, you know, it's kind of one of those deals, salary caps issues that, that you, you've had in the past, and, and, and age getting up there. But, but talk about what he meant to the franchise the last two years and, and what maybe he still has left in the tank as he goes to Denver. Well, we didn't trade a guy who wasn't going to be able to be successful in the league. I think when Hamilton traded him to Long Island a couple of years ago, they felt it was like a one-year deal and then he'd be done. And then when Long Island traded him to us, they thought it would be, you know, John only had one more year. Well, John fooled us all. And John's a professional, you know, he's a professional lacrosse player. He's, you know, he had a great year. I thought the last six or seven games for us, he was outstanding. He's going to have a great couple of years with Denver. You know, he's got, a, he's got a younger child. He moved to Denver. He plays for the Colorado Mammoth. So geography-wise, this was a good fit for him. And we sent him to a great team and a great coaching staff. So, you know, they're a contender. So we tried to do everything we could to make this transition easier for both John and Michael and also for Brendan. And you talked about Michael Simon going to Denver as part of the Brendan Mundorf deal. And then a deal that is going to get announced today, you swap defensemen with Denver as, as well, sending Dominic Sebastiani to Denver, and, and you get Brian McGill. Uh, talk about just, I guess, the makeup of your defense now with, with Brian coming and, and Michael and Dominic going the other direction. Well, once we traded Michael, we needed to get a close. We, we really wanted to get a close guy uh, to give us the flexibility to move Jesse Bernhardt back to the pole with Barney Ehrman. And so it was, that was a trade of strengths. We had a very strong defensive midfield. They had a lot of depth and close defense. We, in turn, wound up helping each other, I think. Dom will be a great shorty for them, and uh, we hope Brian McGill will be a, study for us, a starter for us on close D. And without getting into too much of what else may be coming in the future, but you talk, you know, with John being up in age, you do have a couple older defensemen, but does adding Brian really give you, I mean, you have Mike, Mike Evans, who, you know, all pro defenseman to go with Jesse and, and Brian and, um, oh. Barney Ehrman. Thank you. That's, that's the guy I was forgetting. I knew I was forgetting somebody. So talking about just what that's done, again, Brian Spolina and Nicky Polanco got a lot of the press, deservedly so, for the great players they've been throughout their careers, but this really allows you to get, young on defense as well as 
as you know as you kind of re try and rebuild that unit well when we took a look at our team we really feel we need a guy in every position and so when we started looking at the draft there are some really good players in the draft but there weren't a lot in some of the positions that we needed and so uh, that's one of the reasons why we had built up a lot of picks. We had 8, 9, 10, and 16. Uh, this way we trade pick 8, we trade pick 16, but we still get two players in the top 10 and three in the top 24. So it gives us some flexibility to bring in some younger players, but at the same time I'm attacking some needs. And, uh, you know, with Brian Spelina, he's been such a clubhouse leader and he plays great when there's a crease guy there. And Nicky's a guy who can play down low or up top, so they've been, and nicky has been great in the locker room too, so we want to try to get a little younger while we're utilizing the leadership skills and the competitiveness of our older players and be prepared to move for the future. And you mentioned the draft, I mean the draft now with it being in January, is that really what next is next on, on your plate? I'm sure there might be some other things, you know, that you're always working on something to try and make the Bayhawks better, but is the draft really what's next on your plate? It is. You know, the supplemental draft will come first. That There are some players in the supplemental pool that we're interested in, so we'll take a look at that to help build our roster. And then, you know, the draft is for us. You know, if we find a guy who's great who lives in California and a guy who's great who lives in Pennsylvania, we try to take the Pennsylvania guy so he can make practice. So trying to find guys that fit into what we're trying to accomplish and live in an area uh, where we can get them to practice, I think that's really been one of the keys to our success. Well, he's Dave Cottle. He's the president and head coach of the MLL champion Chesapeake Bayhawks. Coach, as always, we appreciate your time here, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thanks, Chris, and it's been my pleasure.